Hello, hello, hello. Here is uh, episode number 28 of Explode Your Coaching Business podcast brought to you by gtex.org.uk, growing together exponentially. I am your host, the one and the only Simone Vincenzi, and this is the podcast for coaches, speakers, and trainers who want to grow their businesses by making an impact in the world. Today's episode is sponsored by Explode Your Coaching Business Training. So for more information, visit www.gdex.org.uk forward slash start. Today, my guest is the one and the only, the GTEx member Aslam Cheval, the mind architect. Check you out. Now, about Aslam, for years, he has carefully studied the most successful leaders in the world and he discovered that every single successful person has one powerful trait in common. They have developed total mastery over their mind. Aslam rose from a very humble background, migrating from to the UK from Pakistan with his wife and family. He had really, really little money and he almost struggled to survive and he had no idea what it felt like to be successful. Within years of challenges, the failed investment, painful losses, and you're going to hear some incredible stories, he bounced back to become truly successful. How Aslam now runs multiple successful businesses and inspires young entrepreneurs to create the businesses of their dreams. Now, today we will talk about what he learned when he met Bob Proctor, and Bob Proctor actually gave him his pen. He met his meeting with Jack Canfield, the importance of taking responsibility for your success. How actually he bought a 2 million pound house, starting from 500 pound when he came in, and drives now his dream car, and how to eliminate fears and live life on your term. Now, make sure that you stay until the end because it's going to be an incredible interview. Also, make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out any other episode. If you want to reach out to me or you have any question, you can email me at simone at gtex.org.uk. That goes straight into my inbox. With that, let's start the music. Hello and uh, welcome to episode number 28 and uh, today we are here, Aslam Cheval. Aslam, how are you today? I am very well, Simone. Thank you very much for asking. How are you? I am incredibly well. Thank you very much, Aslam. First question, mind architect. What the heck does it mean? How did it came about? I mean, I- I'm lying. I know that story, but I think you guys, you will love it. So why, <laughs> <laughs> why mind architect, Aslam? Mind architect. Yeah, you know, uh, I was struggling to get a tagline for myself. I came across many different ones. And the reason I picked up the mind architect was because that's what I am. T- tell me for, more. For any construction <clears throat> that you do, whether it's a rundown property or whether it's a new property, you need an architect that can really do a brilliant job. Right. So that's what I am actually doing. I'm working with people's mind. I'm trying to change their minds, to get rid of the baggages, to get rid of the rubbish, to create more space in their mind. And you need a good architect that can create the space that is required so that you can bring in the fresh stuff inside. Oh, definitely. I mean, if you don't have a good, if you have a rubbish architect, I mean, I know you're, in, you're involved in properties. And uh, if you have a rubbish architect, then uh, the yeah. property is going to collapse, right? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I had a rubbish architect for my property where I stay. And that was one of the experiences which I had was because we do not have storage spaces because we had a rubbish architect. And I don't want you to do that. So with the mind, you've got to have an architect that can work with you to create that space so that you can take in the fresh information that is required. Oh, wow. That's brilliant, Aslam. So now uh, I know that uh, you are doing a lot of work with people, helping them getting rid of their fears, uh, their hunger and their sadness, uh, all these things that get people stuck. But before we go into that in in a minute, I would love to ask you, how did you end up doing that? What was uh, what made you say this is what I want to do? It's a long journey and an expensive journey that I've had, (laughs) expensive experience rather, I would say. Uh, I'm not sure whether if you remember the 2007 crash that we had, uh, it was a global crash. And during that time, I lost a lot of money in finance, financially and in real estate. Right. I had almost gone into a nervous breakdown when 
I came across this amazing lady, Zarina Helani, who was who is uh, a professional EFT specialist. Mm -hmm. Now, EFT basically means uh, emotional freedom technique, where you tap your meridian points and you get the energy flowing. Right. So I went to her and she started working on me. She did the first five hours and I was like totally blown away with that entire experience. I'd never heard of it before. I never knew that you could just tap certain points on your body and you know the entire energy could change. I, I remember the first time I <laughs> I came across that. I was really? <laughs> is that how it is that the simple? I got to tap weird points on my face and it works, but it is magical. I exactly. Agree with you. It is, you know, something with the Chinese do, you know, where they poke the needles around with yeah, you're just tapping. Have you ever done acupuncture? Acupuncture all? I have done many times. I, I've done it a few weeks ago and uh, I, as, as soon as I saw the needles, like, do you remember how long are the needles? They are. And I didn't know that just a small part of the needle was going in. So I immediately go scared. I say, what's going on with this? But I know we are getting sidetracked. So keep going, Asla. Right. So um, I went to her. She did that emotional change in me. My energy changed. I went for another session. And that's when I realized I needed to do this. This all happened when I was in Dubai. And when I came back to London, I wanted to know more about this, this EFT. And while doing a search on EFT, I came across this program, which is You Are Born Rich. Right. And the program is uh, of Bob Proctor. Our, our dear friend, Bob. Our <laughs> dear friend, who eventually turned into my mentor, my coach, and he changed my life. I went to, I got in touch with him through his team and I did his coaching program which is a 13 months coaching program and you're constantly on a regular contact you have the regular contact with Bob and the programs that are there which are to completely change your mindset right so I did that and then after that I had the opportunity to go and meet him in person wow which was in Canada where he did his matrix program and that program is seven days your intense the inner room with 50 to 100 people with Bob working away all kinds of different strat strategies that you could think of wow. to change your mind or you to become a better person, whether it's in your business, whether it's in personal development or whatever it is, you come out of that place completely different. And that's what happened. I wanted to then teach people go out and explain to people what was actually stopping them. Mm. The stick person, which he explained to us uh, through, was such an easy thing, which was the life-changing thing, which a person should always use when he right. has problems. Right. Before we go into the stick person, because I think uh, is a great model to explain for our listeners, I know that uh, you have a Bob Proctor's pen, right? <laughs> Bob Proto gave you his pen. That's right. That's How, right. Can you just tell me very quickly the story? Because I think oh, that it's story. It's, it's an amazing story. Um, I had his book, You Are Born Rich, you know, and I was sitting across Bob Proctor on the table, like you and I, we are just sitting. And I just gave him the book and I said, Bob, could you just sign this book up for me? And I'd love to have that. And at the same time, while he took his pen out, I said, no, I want you to sign this with my pen. And I gave him my pen and it was uh, something which I wanted him to do it. And he asked me, why do you want me to sign with your pen? I said, well, you know, every time I use this pen again, I will get that energy of yours in me. I will know that this pen has been used by Bob, you know, and that energy is just going to flow into me. So he took the pen, he signed up, he signed the book up. And the next comment I had from him was, wow, this pen is smooth. It really writes beautifully. So what did I do next? I clipped it. I didn't want to give it to him because it was a Mont Blanc pen, which like I had. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but I just clipped it and I gave it to him and I said, Bob, you can have it. It's yours. Then he turned around and he says, why do you want to give this to me? So, well, one simple reason. Now, whenever you use this pen, I will get that energy and you will know that it is me so I'll get double the energy and it'll be a constant flow of that energy. <laughs> wow. But as all good uh, turns here, you know, it turns out to me that he gave me his pen. 
Right. This pen, which is a cross pen, it's quite an old crappy pen. It is actually, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> and that's what he said. He says it's an old pen. It's not as expensive as yours. But to me, I told him, I said, Bob, you have no idea how expensive this pen is. To me, it is priceless. It's your pen. Yes. The pen that you have used to write your material. And it's always going to be with me. Wow. Well, it's an amazing pen. It really writes beautifully. And I use it for all my events, for all my notes. I still use that pen of his. Oh, what a story. And uh, it is really powerful to see. It made me think about the value that we put on, on things. Yeah. Like for Bob, that was a pen. But for you, that was... Uh, it's priceless. It's priceless. And I think that uh, as change makers or coaches and speakers, for some people, there are always going to be people that will not value what we do, but there are other people that uh, just what we do is priceless for them because we can definitely change their lives. And I've seen you doing it uh, with many people <laughs> that I know even personally, the work that you do. So we're talking about the stickman. Talk to me about the stigma and why is this model really important and how can that change people's life? Before I do that, you know, the moment I came out of the room with Bob's pen, right. many people had seen in the group, you know, that Bob had given this pen to me and everybody wanted to touch that pen. <laughs> they were like, hands off, oh, hands off. <laughs> I can feel Bob's energy coming through me. So I was like feeling, hang on, I've got the pen, complete pen to me, you know. So it gives a very good feeling to it. Wow. So the stick person. Uh, it's very difficult to explain it over here, but the stick person is, if you can imagine, just a round ball uh, with a body. And when we are born, we have got nothing but a subconscious mind. Right. And it's very easy to explain in the stick person that how your mind actually works Mm. is the information that is coming into us till the age of five or seven we are is through the five senses that we've got. You know, the see, hear, touch, smell, taste. We pick up all that. Mm -hmm. And your subconscious mind is constantly like a sponge, just taking all that information inside. But at the same time, it's also taking in all the negative stuff. All the conversation that is going around you and all the messages that are coming to you through your seniors, through your parents, through your elders. And as you grow up, those kind of like stay in the database. Right. So through the stick person, which he explained, and now that's what the model I use to explain to people as to how you can go about changing your life. So I have a, I have a question right now, which is, uh, I, I've actually heard this somewhere that... Uh, Actually, children, when they are still in the womb, can they pick up those information. You come yeah. across the information. So it's really something that it goes incredibly deep in our psyche from uh, almost the day we, we, are, we are created in our mother's womb. Uh, so how can people then change something that is so ingrained in ourselves? Like almost some, some things from the moment where we were born. It's not from the moment you're born, it's from the moment you're conceived. Okay, right. So as your brain starts to develop, you have the five senses that are given to you. And most of them are already activated. The touch, mm -hmm. the feel, the hearing part of it. So these are already there inside you when you are in your mother's womb. Right. So it's how your mother touches you when she's feeling you. You feel more connected when she's moving around or what she's talking, what conversation is going around you at that time yeah. is all taken inside. And if there is an argument taking place with your parents or with the parents or, or with anybody else, that child is listening to that argument and it is getting fed inside. Got it. They are not aware of it at that moment, but as they grow up, it does build up and it does come up. And that's one of the therapies which I help people out with is using timeline. Mm. is to go back and to clear the problems that are there. So is a technique, is a time, timeline therapy, right? I've heard about that. And uh, I mean, uh, is a <clears throat> technique which is fabulous. Can you explain a bit more how it works? Because I know that is something that you use a lot when uh, you are working with your clients, just very briefly. Uh, timeline therapy is basically where 
we tell you to just float above your body and to go back into time. Okay. Where the incident happens. Now, the thing is, you consciously are not aware of it, what it of what the whole thing is, but your subconscious mind knows everything. Yes. It records everything. So it knows exactly what happened when it happens. So when you give instructions to your subconscious mind to take you back into time, it takes you back into the exact specific time when that incident happened. And when you go there, you can go have a look at that moment. You can get the learnings from there that what is it that you need to learn yeah. and bring it back so that this problem doesn't arise again. So is a way to heal yourself. It's the way to heal yourself. Starting from uh, the beginning, when the problem cre- exactly. has been created, because that problem has a negative charge and or uh, this emotional charge, so you're actually releasing and detaching from this emotional charge, right? It is. You, you know, you are you're detaching yourself. But most of the cases, you see, I mean, when you go back into time and you realize that that incident when it happened really did not have the same meaning. It's mm. a story that you created at that time. Can you give us an example, maybe, uh, if you want to, on uh, maybe a process that uh, when you did uh, timeline therapy yourself, uh, what is something that you went back uh, to do or you learned? Uh, that would be, would I'll be really just give you a very simple example. Um, it's not necessary to go back. I mean, you could, you could use it for that purpose. A child could come into a room and ask for something from the father. Right. And the father would get very angry and tell the child off. Mm. The child at that time could be five years, six years, seven years, could give a very different meaning that maybe my father does not love me. Right. That is why he did not give me that stuff. Right. Or maybe my father just doesn't love me. That's why he put, told me off. Mm. But little does she know that what actually happened to the father before the event happened. Right. Maybe your father didn't have money to buy it her could present. Be he didn't or... have the money. He could have been fired from the job or he may have had an argument with somebody. He may just not be in the mood that time. It happens with everybody. And we say things off and the other person may respond to it in a different way and create a story. It gives them, they give a meaning to it. And the moment you give a meaning to an incident, You hold on to the meaning. Mm. So when you go back and you look at it and when you visualize it as a grown-up, you realize that that story that you created was not the right story. And so as soon as you realize that, you can create a meaning. So the moment you realize that, you give another meaning to it, you create a different meaning, that is not an event, that event changes. It's it's a very powerful technique. I did it myself uh, and uh, I remember... But some people might be thinking, really, can we really float in our body? What if the images that come to me are made up? And these are all the questions that I had, but I realized how powerful it is and to trust my subconscious mind to get me into the right place. And uh, I did, and for people who want to even go even farther than that, I had, um, you, have you ever heard about a, a past, past life regression yeah. term? So I had a past life regression therapy where I went through, explored different, five different past life and it felt so real and in every moment I had something to learn. So our mind has an incredible, incredible power. And I think that uh, this is something that you talk about a lot when you do your seminars. About That's right. The, the combination, the lock, the, 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 the combination, right? Yeah, that, that is something The secret of success. I, the secret of success is something which I heard from Jack Canfield. Right. Um, he's the author for Chicken Soup of for Your Soul. And, and you met J- J- Jack and Field as well, right? I do mention him. Uh, he's got this program, uh, Trainer Trainer, which I did. He's got this amazing book, Success um, Resources. Uh, and from that, I'm not sure of the book title. Mm-hmm. So over there, I mean, it was one of his events when he mentioned to me that, you know, the success, success principles. Success principles. Success principles, yes. Success principles, that's the one. That's when he mentioned about the secret to success is like a combination lock. Mm -hmm. If you know the combination, it really doesn't matter who you are, what age you are, what color you are. The lock has to open. Like any combination lock, if you know the combination, the lock has to open. 
the same way is, is this. If you know the combination to the success mm -hmm. principles, it has to open. And one of the biggest, the main one which we talk about in our events is taking responsibility. Yes. It is such an important thing to take responsibility for all your actions. Was there ever a moment where you had to take responsibility of something that you did or happened to you that was very difficult to accept? Because uh, sometimes I, it's not that easy. I mean, I'm mean, reading a lot of books and uh, they all say, oh, you got to take responsibility of your action. But I found that a lot of time it's just easier to point a finger <laughs> and say it was your fault or not even yeah. recognizing. So <clears throat> It happens that... every time. It happens every time. And in my life, I've had many incidents where I've actually turned around and blamed everybody for all my, my failures. Because we are a nation, it's not only the nation, it's a generation where we are very quick at blaming everybody mm. and pointing our fingers to others because we don't want to feel that we are responsible for the losses. I did that. I was in business with, my, with a relative of mine. And as the business was growing, one fine day I got up in the morning and I realized that I didn't have any money left. Wow. He had taken all my money. I bet you were not that happy. <laughs> I was absolutely <laughs> furious. Uh, but more than that, I was like, I didn't know what to do. How would I face my family? How would I face my wife? Mm. And for many years, I blamed him for my loss, for my failures. Even when I was succeeding in business and when I was losing money, I was blaming him for it. Right. And what really changed me was this very simple quote. Two letters, ten words. If it is to be, it is up to me. May I repeat it again? If it is to be, it is up to me. Right. If it is to be, it is up to me. Yeah. And at the same time, I came across the success principles and the combination lock. And that's when I realized I had to take responsibility for all my problems. How, Not only my success, also for my failures. How easy or difficult was for you to take responsibility? Because I think that it's easier to take responsibility when we are successful. It's like, yeah, that was me. But when we fail, how, um, how easy was for you? Was it difficult? And how did you do that? What can you, is there anything that you can give to your audience, to the audience that is listening to this episode to help them even take more responsibility? It's not easy. Any change that you're going to put into yourself is not going to be easy. But you've got to be committed to it. And the very simple way I'm going to tell you is what uh, I learned from Jack is an equation which is E plus R equals O. Okay. So I'm sure you're going to ask me what it means. You what, know. what it means? <laughs> so if you write down E plus R equals O, E is the event plus R, which is the response to the event that you will have, mm -hmm. is going to determine the outcome. So an event that took place, whatever happened, uh, I lost my money or business went bad or the rain came and it ruined my business or there was a train strike and I couldn't travel, that event mm -hmm. happened. How you respond to that event is going to be the outcome. I could sit and I could blame which would cause the cause and effect where you are always in the effect side and you're constantly blaming, blaming, blaming everybody else for whatever that has happened to you. Or you could take the responsibility and find a solution. Stand up and take this bullet and find a solution and change the whole outcome of it. So is it really about as you're saying, taking responsibility and uh, owning the fact that we are the creators of our own reality. And, exactly. And I remember there, is a, there was a question that one of my mentors gave to me, and uh, sometimes it's an easy question to ask, sometimes it becomes very difficult to ask ourselves this question, which is, uh, how did I create this? How did I create this? And for example, I did a, maybe I did a great seminar. How did I create this? That feels pretty good. I did a rubbish seminar. 
how did I create this? That doesn't feel that good, but I created it. Or uh, I did uh, maybe um, I had a very successful month. How did I create this? Yeah. I had a rubbish month. How did I create this? <laughs> right. So that's very powerful as well. So, so when you, I mean, like you've been in few of my events. You know, I mean, there was one event which I had, which went wrong. Mm-hmm. So, I could have very easily blamed everybody around it mm-hmm. for it. You know that either my slides were not working or the slides were not correct, or but I took responsibility for it. Yes. And I took the responsibility, and I moment I took the responsibility, I found out where I went wrong. In the same way, when you are creating something, it's because you've done something well. But when you do something wrong and you take responsibility, you will know exactly where you went wrong. Yeah. And when you take the responsibility for that, you will find a solution to solve it next time. Yeah, it, it almost puts you in a position of power. Exactly. It, it gives your power back. Yeah. Because it, when you're blaming, you give your power away. But when you're taking responsibility, you're saying, actually, this is You're in control. Me. I'm in control. I, have, I created this outcome. I can create a different outcome. Exactly. Right? Oh, th- that's brilliant. It's, it's, it's like, you know, I mean, for everything, there's a negative and a positive. Yes. So if you have done something wrong, there is a right side to it. And when you know that you've done something wrong, you will figure out the right to it. So let's just take responsibility for all your actions. Now, I'm, let's say I'm taking responsibility and uh, I still have something in me which is stopping me. I know that you work with your clients a lot on uh, helping them overcoming fears and uh, breaking fears apart. So what, what could you recommend for someone who says maybe is procrastinating or maybe someone is blocked in order to take an action that actually this is what they really want to do? Procrastination is somebody when goes into procrastination is when somebody is trying to be too perfect. I've always noticed. I was a perfectionist one time. And when you become too perfect, you know, you want you are not going to complete the job. Nobody yeah. is perfect. Take the biggest company, Apple, Microsoft. They all release programs. Microsoft in particular. Microsoft in particular, they, they will release the program, <laughs> put it out into the market, and let the public decide, let the bugs come out. Yeah. In the same way, if we try to be very perfect, you will never complete it. If Microsoft was supposed to be very perfect, we wouldn't have gone any further than Windows 95, you know, True. because it never did anything. It learned from those mistakes. But then they release the program and then they, after two weeks, they find a bug, so there is an update. Yeah. After two weeks, there is another update. So... So get that thing out. Second thing is a lot of fear is caused by what you think. It's your imaginations. What are you thinking? What image are you creating? Because your mind works in pictures. Yes. If I'm going to tell you, Simone, don't think of a pink elephant right now. What are you thinking? Uh, Of a pink elephant. (laughs) Exactly. And if I'm going to ask you, you know, what your front door looks like, you're going to go into it and you're going to visualize your front door. Yeah. So your mind works in pictures. So anything when you have fear, nightmares is one of them. What is a nightmare? It's an image that you've created in your mind. And your subconscious picks it up. Your subconscious mind does not know the difference what is real and what is not real. Yeah. It takes everything to be real. And that's what happens. A very simple example I will give you is that If you have in front of you somebody who you love very much or who is very dear to you, you stand literally two feet away from that person. Close your eyes and think something negative about it and see how your body is going to react. It's going to bring in a lot of fear. Yeah, it does. It works. (laughs) In spite of you knowing that that person is right in front of you where no harm is getting placed, but when you close your eyes and you think negative, your body is going to react to it. Yeah, true. So that's what it is. Our minds work in pictures. And the moment you realize that, you change that picture. So you can change the picture and create a picture that actually is empowering rather than a picture yeah. that can destroy you. <laughs> right? Visualization. 
it was one of the things which I spoke to spoke about in the events about you doing basketball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you remember that? I remember that. I mean, how important is visualization? You could sit in your room over here visualizing your throws. Yes. Keep practicing that. You do not even need to go onto the th- or into your court. And when you're on the court, when you're in that same position, your ball is going knows, to go in. It knows what to do. And uh, I found that uh, when I'm playing basketball, I found that uh, even if uh, I'm visualizing just a fraction of a second, you know, when you're shooting, there's a moment when you're charging the shot. So there's yeah. a moment where you bend your knees and then you you, uh, you extend your arm and you break your wrist, like which is the technical yeah. term is like not, not breaking your wrist, but <laughs> you actually you almost like break your wrist in order for the, for the ball to get in. I found that if I visualize the ball to get in, even while I'm charging the shot, so if I'm just, it takes a fraction of a second, but even in that fraction, I look at just, and I imagine the ball going in, my shot 90% of the time goes in. If not, and I'm focusing more on my body, and I'm not focusing on the ball going in, it's very likely that the ball can go off. off track. So, And that told me, how powerful is visualization? It doesn't have to be, you know, a two hours visualization. It can be even a fraction of a second. Yeah. But how fast is then to trigger the, the right things in our body? Is, is incredibly powerful. But if you keep practicing it at home, visualizing in all different positions of, you know, your bending of your knee and making that shot go, when you're on the court, it will happen. Brilliant. It will happen because... Your mind really doesn't know that when you are sitting in your room and practicing or when you're on the court, whether it's real or not. So, Aslam, I could talk with you, I could talk with you for hours, as you know that, as we do <laughs> when we have our session. We just are talking for talk, hours. Talk, talk, talk. Exactly. So, uh, I, I need to go to do some visualization right now, <laughs> as you suggested. Uh, how can people get in touch with you and get, uh, more, and get to know more about you? They can get in touch with me through my website, which is aslamshaval.com. That's A-S-L-A-M-C-H-E-V-A-L.com. Or they can send me an email, uh, which is again, aslam, A-S-L-A-M, at shavals, C-H-E-V-A-L-S, dot net. That's perfect. Well, Aslam, thank you very, very much for coming on the show today. It's been incredible. (laughs) It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. You've been after me since quite a while. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Aslam, Aslam, we need to do the show. Come on. I want want to interview you. So finally, we made it. (laughs) All right, guys. Thank you very much for uh, listening to episode number 28 of Explode Your Coaching Business Show, the place to be if you are a coach, a speaker, a change maker, and you want to grow your business and make an impact in the word make sure you subscribe to our podcast uh, uh, on itunes or stitcher wherever you're listening to it and also leave us a comment that's really important i would love to know what do you want to hear about and also leave a comment to our guests uh, so that we can give them uh, we can tell them uh, what our audience thinks about them all right guys thank you very much aslam thank you again a pleasure and always remember live with purpose ciao